Things are looking lively tonight, here on Moggy Lou's Midnight Monologues. Yeah! Now we'll introduce our panel. You each have two hours to introduce yourselves. <laughs> two hours? Two hours? The show isn't even that long. <laughs> We're off to a thundering start. <laughs> With the panel out of the way, it's time to get to our third guest. This is a man who's dreadful as a foe and even more frightening as an ally. I'm Eisen, the first mate of Eifried's pirates. Ooh, you're solid as a rock, totally unruffled. Of course I am. I practiced this by myself 256 times this week. That's a strong work ethic for an outlaw. You can say I've cased the joint and got this place on lockdown. Because to come unprepared would be criminal. Can you even hear me? I was sure that one would get a good laugh. His confidence is what's scary. Hang in there, Aizen. Time to get us back on the rails. Aizen, draw your card. Ugh, tough crowd tonight. Here. And the card is... What turns me on. <laughs> Go ahead and tell everyone what stimulates you. That's simple enough. Nothing gets me going like curios. <laughs> Items like Groon's Urn, distinct in form and cloaked in antiquity. The beauty of mysterious artifacts, lights an unrivaled passion in my heart. Did he really understand the question? I'm not sure that's what Mogilu meant by a turn-on, but it is hard to interrupt such passion. Is there something in particular you like? I was hoping you'd ask. My most recent prize is a tiger's eye teacup. It appears crude at first glance, but it is a masterpiece that sublimely reflects nature. Marvelous! With that in mind, we had an expert appraise your tiger's eye teacup. Its shocking estimated value is... An astounding, unbelievable 50 gold. 50 gold? After careful analysis, we discovered that it's not a teacup, but a water dish for cats. Impossible! Well, let's just say I hope you picked it up at a steal. <laughs> Wait, if I picked the card at random, how did you have an expert look at my teacup? Sorry, that's all the time we have. The next part of the secret word is S-E. Hey, answer me, Mogilu! Our next victim, uh, guest, will be Lafayette. See you next week! Get back here! She just said victim, right? I have a bad feeling about this. Hey, Velvet, did you ever go to school? No, but I learned how to read and write. An old lady in the village taught everyone. Why? Are you interested in school? Yeah, I wonder what it's like. You get to study a lot, right? Whether you want to or not. You know, I wonder what your life would be like if you went to school. The best part of school is after-school clubs. A bunch of wild kids experimenting with life. You and I should start up a band, Lafayette. That sounds fun. But wait, you're in school too? I sure am. The closer exams came, the less focused I got, you see. I reckon I'll never graduate. I'm not sure why you sound so proud of it. Then I shall join the student government and foster a proper educational environment. You do seem the class president type. You'd think that, but it is I who is class president. Eleanor merely serves as my secretary. Is that true? <sighs> she must have cheated in the election. <laughs> Politics is a dirty game. Words like cheat or unfair are for losers. Then I shall organize a detective club and uncover our foul president's misdeeds. Have fun, you guys. Join my machinery club, Lafayette. I'll get you good and fired up to learn. We'll aim to be champions in the world contraption competition. A machinery club? Sounds fun. But I won't tolerate slacking. No credits until the trophy is ours. Huh? But... Ah, <sighs> the teacher is more passionate than the student. What club would you join, Velvet? Me? Well, the home ec club sounds good. 
I could pick up some new cooking tricks and learn some crafting. Home ec, huh? Is it a little dull for me? It's down to earth. I like it. It's nice to think about reading a book next to you while you're cooking something. Yeah, but we don't need school for that, do we? Oh? <laughs> you're right. Ah, uh, I'm scared. So very scared. Mogilu? What's got you so frightened? It's idols! Idols? They're beings on a distant world that garnered the adoration of the masses. I learned of them when studying the Empyreans. They must be pretty bizarre to frighten you. Does being that rude come naturally to you? Idol? The word has a certain mystique to it, don't you think? What sort of beings are they? They are embodiments of the Arcane, descending to stand atop great altars. What does that mean? They take the forms of young women clad in short, frilly skirts! What? Why short skirts? Beats me. Only the gods could explain it. So are there a lot of these idols? Fierce battles are waged between their adherents, who each believe theirs to be supreme. Wait, people wage wars over them? Not all the time. Indeed, idols are said to often collaborate or form groups known as units. Their worshippers gather together and wave ritual items called glow sticks. It is how they express their unconditional love. That sounds... absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Their calendars are packed with a myriad of group rituals known as live concerts and festivals. Each one is said to hold singing and dancing you could only see in dreams. Wow! So, they sing and dance? I don't really get it. It's hard to explain. Their voices are without equal, their movements passionate, and their smiles pure. It is written that there are as many idols as there are stars in the sky. I see. And each has their own character that cannot be found anywhere else. Precisely. I want to meet an idol someday. They're on a distant world. But if they exist, perhaps you will meet one someday. But I must warn you, my boy. Some say that they are monsters who make slaves of men. Is that possible? Luffy said. If you ever meet an idol, keep your wits about you, all right? <laughs> Don't worry, Velvet. I'm sure idols are wonderful creatures. Oh. You sound so confident. Yeah. I don't understand it, but I trust my feelings.